Welcome to the War Academy channel. The Second World War left us with many iconic phrases, which summarize very complex situations with a couple of words. One of them was commented on by an Allied general who said that he had won the war, without seeing any German soldiers. Although this is obviously a huge oversimplification and exaggeration, there is some truth to it, which we will see next. In this program, we are going to see what was the opinion that the German soldiers had of the British and Americans, but before getting to it, we have to understand what was the combat doctrine that they had, which obviously, fixed the opinion that the Germans had of them. When talking about some military aspect of the Second World War, allusion is always made to the infantry, the tanks, the aviation, or the different supply networks, however, there is a very important element that is rarely taken into account, due to how unattractive it can be compared to the items we just named. We are referring to artillery, and it is that although, when talking about the First World War, what stands out the most is the artillery, in the second, being a much more mobile war, it seems that it was not important. But the reality is that its weight it was monumental, the great concentrations of Soviet artillery are known by all, as well as their effects on the attacking German positions that were devastating. However, the artillery firepower of the Western Allies was not far behind. Already General Patton at the time, made a study that indicated that the artillery units that made up a division, represented 15% of its troops, but caused 50% of the enemy casualties. Finally, this study indicated that the total own casualties that a U.S. division had when carrying out an attack belonged to 92% for the infantry, and only 2% for the artillery units. Based on these statistics, which show the large number of enemy casualties that they can carry out with artillery, without exposing themselves to suffering too many casualties, the concentration of artillery pieces and their taste for using them, only increased in the Allied side. From this comes that exaggerated phrase that we commented at the beginning, which refers to the fact that some Allied commanders advanced through Europe without actually seeing or confronting any German at close range. And it is that, there were many cases, in which Allied formations far superior in number, were paralyzed as soon as they encountered the least German resistance. To go on to request different artillery attacks in the area, before continuing with their advance. This way of acting, which made them dependent on the concentration of many artillery pieces, contributed a lot to the saturation of the Allied logistics system, which continuously needed to move huge amounts of ammunition. After all subsequent analyzes, this way of proceeding was identified as one of the main culprits for the slow Allied advance from September 1944. Although many generals and soldiers were satisfied with this procedure, because it greatly reduced the number of casualties they themselves suffered. There were other American generals who mounted in anger. This was the case of the general of the U.S. 36th Infantry Division, who stated the following, We cannot sit at a distance, bombard the enemy and wait for him to withdraw. We must put an end to the indiscriminate use of heavy long-range weapons against worthless targets. With this in mind, let's move on to the testimonies that the Germans left about these enemies. The first opinion of the Germans that we are going to see regarding this, will be that of Field Marshal von Rundstedt himself, who after being captured was interrogated by the Allies. The Marshal went on to indicate that although this way of making war was typical of both the Americans and the British, English soldiers were still much more cautious than the Americans. This is undoubtedly a legacy of the First World War, in which progress was not made until the enemy line had been devastated with the greatest possible artillery fire. Another characteristic that the Germans detected from the Western Allies is that they always acted following their manual, and their movements were very rigid and predictable. A German officer belonging to the 9th Panzer Division, would come to think the following, the Americans seemed too cute to us. They acted according to the manual, and if they were answered by doing something that was not included in it, they would start to tremble. After one attack, they normally needed three days to prepare for the next. The time it took for the Allies to reach Germany is laughable, 
If they had used our blitzkrieg tactics, they would have been able to get into Berlin in a matter of weeks. In view of this longer testimony, we have to say that, in general, the Germans believed that both the US and British Army had good soldiers, but they lacked proper leadership and initiative in combat. In summary they said that they were lions led by donkeys. Another opinion that many soldiers shared based on what they saw day by day was the following. This referred to the material and equipment that each side had. While on the one hand, the Germans suffered a greater shortage of both men, ammunition, weapons, armor, gasoline and other elements. The Allies had more and more material on the battlefield as it was being landed. This naturally led them to comment that their enemies beat them solely because of their abundant resources and material, and not because of their military prowess. With regard to generals, the Germans held Patton in high regard, and he was the one they most feared. Knowing that he was one of the few generals in the Western Allied bloc with the ability to make strong advances in depth. Based on this, Patton was used in 1944, in more deception operations than direct combat. This could be seen, when he was put at the command of a non-existent army that supposedly intended to cross the Potty Calais, or already during the autumn of 1944, when he was in an area of the front in which no offensive was going to be attempted direct to Germany. In both situations, it was intended to serve as a magnet to attract German troops to their area, while other generals attacked from other sectors. Finally, and by way of summary, German Sergeant Helmut Gunther commented the following, it was not that the Allies were cowards, they simply had no need to take risks, or to hurry up. It's not that they were slow, they were rather cautious. And well, in short, with these opinions based directly on the way of proceeding that the Allies had, we can get a fairly broad idea of what the Germans thought of them. And what did you think? Do you think these opinions match reality, or do you think they weren't like that at all? The main book that has served as a basis has been Armageddon by Max Hastings, whose link I leave in the description. As well as the video we made in which we analyzed the opinions that the German leader had of his most famous marshals. This is it. Subscribe and support this channel if you like the program and see you in the next one. See you soon.